Welcome. Uh, in this video what I want to talk about is charge separation and there's a lot because it's an important topic and there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. It's more than just positive and negative and how far, how far they are apart. Um, one of the main factors that influences charge separation is the pH. Okay, And we know in chemistry that you can use pH to drive a reversible reaction in either direction. Okay, and then also in chemistry we know there's basically two different types of reactions. You have endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions. Now in a previous video I already showed that uh, when the biocell's trans, uh, semiconductor switches to on and it hydrolyzes the, the water uh, that it, it forms a OH or hydroxy ions and, and hydrogen uh, ions. Okay, now the hydrogen ions are obviously uh, produce an acid and OH ions produce an alkaline. Okay, so what you end up having is one side of your cell is alkaline and the other side of your cell is acid. Okay, now what's in, with all these uh, OHs over here, what happens is you could have a charge buildup and the charge buildup on the plate here is, is densest right next to the plate and then it drops off into a gradient until it hits over here and then the gradient builds up in the opposite direction to uh, positive charges uh, density is greatest uh, on the positive plate okay so what you have is alkaline goes to neutral then it goes over to acid so there's your there's your pH now another factor that you need to consider especially for a self-charging battery is whether your electrodes are hydrophilic and hydrophobic and that again that's a polar polar opposite like everything else in the universe whether you're talking about positive and negative charge or north and south pole or male and female or day and night or everything is polar opposites in the whole universe okay now their Dr. Pollock is researching this negative exclusion zone here between the negative electrode and and the, the edge over here where it turns positive and he's taken tiny uh, electrodes and he's put a negative one right next to the plate here where the charge density is highest and then he's put another electrode over here on the outside of the exclusion zone and he's picked up a charge voltage on there okay and the greater the charge separation that you can get the higher voltage you're going to get out of your battery so basically that's what you're measuring when you're when you're measuring your voltage you're measuring how much charge separation you've got inside of there okay now the, the percentage of water inside this exclusion zone determines how thick that exclusion zone is going to be if you've just got a little bit of water your exclusion zone is going to be very close over here if you've got more water your exclusion zone is going to be wider okay and um, so what I'm going to do now this is the piece of uh, Nafion that I bought which is the same stuff that Gerald Pollock is, is researching and um, this stuff is a, is a polymer it's used in fuel cells and for an ion exchange membrane and I and in a previous uh, demonstration I showed you that you could take a piece of paper and a piece of graphite with some with some water and you could lay it on this membrane right here and you could create a battery just from water and the nafion and a piece of graphite and I'm going to do that for you again so you can see that we'll put it on milliamp setting right here and we will touch one electrode on the nafion and then we'll touch one electrode over here and you can see look at the voltage we've, we've got or we've got 145 46 uh, 47 is climbing uh, milliamps so there shows you that the exclusion zone is, is what's uh, responsible for the charge separation in here now now I'm going to show you that the conductivity difference and show you that this nafion is actually doing the same thing as a, a semiconductor it's going from a less conductive state to a more conductive state. Now it's not a semiconductor, but but it does do the same same function. So I've got it on 200 million uh, ohms, which is 
the highest uh, ohm setting on the meter and we're going to put it on there okay now with with the graphite and some charge separation you can see we're, we're down 20 30 40 million ohms okay now let's take take this charge separation off of it and just have just have the uh, the naffy on and look at look at our uh, look at the ohms now now we're up at 130 100 40 million, 190, 240 million, or 200 million. So I mean, uh, you can see that the um, that the conductivity of it depends on charge separation. If you take the charge separation away, your conductivity goes down. Put the charge separation on there, your conductivity goes up. So now there's there's a few things that we can infer from all this. That if you want to build a, a self-charging battery. Ideally, what you what you want to have is a hydrophilic surface on your negative electrode, and you want your positive electrode to be hydrophobic. You know, and you want to pay attention to your to your pH inside the, the battery too, because you, you want a neutral zone, you want a, a highly alkaline zone, and you want an acid zone. Okay, and you know that the percentage of water is is also uh, important. Now, this this whole thing is also responsible for the self-recovery in any battery. And the other important uh, thing is you can, there is there is a negative exclusion zone over here, there must be a positive exclusion zone over here because of the polar opposites. And we have, as far as I know, there's nobody uh, doing an investigation about the uh, positive exclusion zone, but it should be basically the same as the negative exclusion zone. And another inference that we can we can have from all of this is that metals are not hydrophobic or hydrophilic so they're actually for a self-charging battery you, you don't want to use metals in there they're good for uh, chemoelectric uh, batteries with regular electrolytes in it but they're not they're not really good for uh, for self-charging batteries and and you can you see this is also the trend um, in all batteries is to, is to go towards all carbon and get away get away from metals so that's uh, basically the, the talk for today and a little demonstration and I hope you found it informative and, uh, uh, and helpful and I'll see you next time.